initial thoughts on the on the uh, the scratching. I'm, I know you were uh, pretty disgruntled, but go ahead and uh, take us through your thoughts on that. You know what? Um, like like I tell a lot of people, uh, if you believe anything anyone writes on Twitter, um, most of it's just memes, and I memed super hard the last two days. But on this show, I'm going to give like my honest opinions with him, Galant, whatever we get into. Um, to be completely honest, if you look at the stats, he is having a better year so far than last year. I think he tied or broke his season high in assists just maybe a couple games ago. Um, but he hasn't been playing number one pick hockey. And I know there's a lot that goes into that. He doesn't get power play time. He doesn't play in the top six. He doesn't play with a lot of guys uh, like the like you know Hughes and those top players. Um, and I think a big thing, too, that people don't understand is I, I believe he is the only number one pick to ever be drafted by a playoff team. I would have to check it, but I'm pretty sure he's the only number one pick to ever be drafted by a team that made the playoffs that year. So it's a really unique situation. Um, putting all that aside, he has to play better. Um, he has to show that intensity I saw in the playoffs. I want to see... I, w- I want to see stronger on the puck. I want to see him skate. And I think bringing up his skating, that's the number one place he lacks. Um, and I know I could get a lot of heat from Lafreniere lovers. I hope they understand I'm one of his biggest supporters. He's not showing an elite sign in anything. He's not being an elite skater. He's not being elite stick handler. He's not being these things that make these other guys stand out. So I think he has to be told by the organization what they want him to be focus on that and if it's being an elite uh you know checking player where you're strong on the puck and taking the puck behind the net whatever it is he has to focus on and i think he just gallant wants to see him along with us play harder all the time i 100 percent agree with that assessment there about his skating some would even go as far as saying he's being lazy to which I would say I don't agree with that. I don't think he's being lazy. I just it's uh, to me it's this very similar to you know this conversation around actually around this time last last season. I remember you know the Rangers had a West Coast road trip, and at some point they played the Golden Knights, and in that game I counted how many times he touched the puck, and it was only like twenty times that he touched the puck. Whereas a guy like Panarin will have it like 40, 50, 60 times a game. Yeah. You know, and I think that has to do with like where he's positioning himself on the ice. And some people have even called that out, too. I think Larry Brooks called that out in one of his articles the other day. Um, but s- speed aside, uh, definitely needs to improve on that. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think positionally he could get he could get a little bit better. But he's also not like horrible at even strength. Like he's one of the best performers on the team in in terms of even strength he's 14 five on five points he doesn't get any power play time like you said and you look at other guys around the league that are picked you know in the same kind of in the same area like top five top 10 picks like zegris jack hughes quinn hughes all those guys get power play time lucas raymond probably all those guys get power play time and lafreniere doesn't so when you're playing only like 12, 13, 14 minutes a night, even strength, you're only going to have so many points. And production-wise, at even strength, it compares to certain certain first overall picks like Stamkos. Uh, and um, maybe not like a Crosby or McDavid, but even strength-wise, he's still up there with, with some notable first, first overall picks. I've seen uh, charts or people compare like his goal totals. It's, it's up there. He's got like 36 around 40 goals, even strength-wise, since he's been drafted. He has no goals on the power play. None. No. Only three career points on the power play. So a lot of it, I think, has to do with, with Gerard Gallant's decision-making. And initially, I'll agree with you. I was, I was scratching my head at the moment that why is he being scratched in, in, place, of, um, in place of Sammy Blay? It's not like it's not like the Zach Wilson situation with the Jets in, in football. Mike White is like a capable is better than than Zach Wilson at this moment. Absolutely. Sammy Blay is not better than Alexi Lafreniere. There's no way 
There's there's no other way you could look at it. It's just you can't compare the two players. I understand Lafreniere is playing like a little bit lackluster for for his standards and for a first overall pick. But what I don't understand is giving a guy like Sammy Blay opportunity after opportunity. It doesn't make any sense. It's the same same thing that we say that we always say about Libor Hayek. Why does that guy get uh, opportunity after opportunity, whereas guys like Lafreniere, Kravtsov are seemingly you know have the shortest leash possible? You no. Know? Yeah, I, I and just to just to say something, it's um, it's interesting, right? Like I think what people forget is uh, developmentally we have some really good defensive and goaltender prospects that have prospered on our team. The list goes on though. You remember a guy, uh, Leias Anderson, you know, oh, yeah. you got, you got guys, Vitaly Kratsov, Kako, uh, Kapo Kako and Alexi Lafreniere. When you look at those and you specifically take Kapo Kako and Alexi Lafreniere, there wasn't a single scout that looked at either of those guys and said, this guy does not deserve to be in the top three. There was a, uh, a, I think it was a TSN broadcast when Kappa was going through where he was going to go and they were showing highlights. Under negatives, they literally listed the word none. They said none. He didn't have a negative. So, okay, and again, a lot of guys go to the NHL. They have to develop. The New York Rangers are maybe the worst team in the league at developing offensive prospects. I mean, I can't think of a team that doesn't put their young players in places to succeed. Now with Lafreniere, I think it's a little different and it's hard to do finger pointing. It's definitely a mix of him not being able to get on the same page and progress how he wants and the organization not being able to put him on power play one top six minutes you listed guys like Zegris, uh, guys like Hughes, uh, guys like Raymond. All those guys went to their team and immediately were put on power play one and top six time. Lafreniere has maybe played one eighth of his shifts in top six time and not a single shift on the top power play because when there's an injury, Hedl goes in, which again, I'm fine with because hedel has been playing great. But you cannot sit there as a Ranger fan and blame this on Lafreniere. And it's it's also kind of hard to blame it on the Rangers. But both of them, especially the Rangers, have to hold accountability for their lack of responsibility that they've had to produce these offensive players because the list goes on with guys that haven't produced for us. It's an old school way of thinking with the new school of the NHL. Like, I understand you want them to work for it and – you know, I didn't. I never understood until I talked to Johnny Lazarus about the Capo Caco scratching. The way I wanted Caco to 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 feel is different than what the organization wanted him. I to, agree. To do so, they wanted him to to him being scratched to be a, a lesson for him. They didn't want him. I personally would rather him see right now as a young player that moment, that sour taste in his mouth 